Hi, 5 Minute Friday number 17 and today we're going to look at producing a part using the MakerBot Replicator 2X. We've got two different projects going on at the moment. The first is producing a 3D printer from scratch, the RepRap Ormrod, and we've already printed the majority of the parts. Next week we're going to look at laser cutting and producing the mechanical assembly. The other project that's ongoing at the moment is the Open Racer 112 scale radio controlled car. And for both of those projects, we need to be able to know how to obtain an SDL file and print it out successfully using a 3D printer. Today, we're gonna to use the MakerBot Replicator 2X. Let's get started. So last week, I did a bit of an introduction to what a 3D printer is, but this week we're gonna concentrate on the MakerBot Replicator 2X. We have a cover on the top and a screen on the front. They serve two purposes, one to keep your hands away from the hot surface inside, but also to keep the temperature um, stable within the, uh, the part. Without having the covers on, you're gonna get the print surface lifting, so it's important to keep these in place. To switch on, we simply have a switch in the back corner and switch that to the on position to get started. The filament is loaded. Another check you'll need to do before getting started is just to make sure that the filament isn't caught around the back of the spool and that it's feeding nicely into the feeder tube. So we'll switch on, it'll make a startup sound. And at this point we're ready to use the machine and we'll probably one of the first things you wanna do whilst you're preparing your software and your part files is to get the thing preheating. It's gonna heat the build plate to 110 degrees, or at least for our settings for ABS, and it's gonna heat one of the extrudes to about 210. One of the most important considerations is the build surface that you're gonna actually print on. I've started to use these build tack um, print surfaces. It's essentially the same surface that's used on a, um, a gaming mouse pad. It's got a self-adhesive sticker on the back. It lays down on the print surface and by far it is the best surface I've ever used. And that's including captain tape, blue tape, various ninja um, print surfaces that you can buy off the internet. It's the cheapest are probably about eight pounds a sheet. And if you treat them right, and by that I mean not heating them above 120 degrees, then any given part will stick first time and it will come straight off. When you set these up, and I'll do a video on these, these build surfaces at some point, it needs to be 0.25 millimeter nozzle height above the print surface, which is a huge amount compared to a normal 3D printing setup. And you also must use a raft um, because the raft will stick to the print surface and then the part will pull away from the raft. This is the main menu and it's operated by the cursor keys around the outside. The back function is generally the left arrow. So if we go into a particular menu, say utilities, press the M and we want to get out, just press the left hand arrow. First of all, you want to preheat just to save your overall print time. It'll make things a bit quicker. We'll preheat, we can choose which extruder we want to heat. In this case, we're going to heat the left tool and that's set through the software. So left tool is on and we just hit start preheat and we get a little bar telling us um, our progress. Generally this is going to take around five minutes to get the bed up to temperature and the extruders up to temperature. Kibot software is one of the simplest interfaces of all 3D printer software. The middle scroll wheel will allow you to zoom on the grey printer surface in the middle here and the right mouse button will allow you to orbit around the um, the 3D space. So before we get started to um, to print the model, we need a model to print. So generally, there's two places you can access STL files, which is the kind of files that are required. One is the website of any given project. In our case, the OpenRCR project is at futurefab.org.uk. You can hit downloads and download all the STL files you need to make your radio controlled car. Another place is thingiverse.com. And if you search for open RCR, you'll be presented with this page. You can download the files, or download a zip file, and there you can access any given part. I've downloaded one of these um, rear wheels. So let's have a look at what that looks like in the MakerBot software. To add it, we'll just go file and add, select the STL file, and you'll probably find that it comes in in a position that's less than ideal. So in our case, we want to make sure it's flat on the print surface. So I will hit the rotation button, rotate it through 
180 degrees, so it's nice and flat. The only downside of that is that there's now the spokes are floating in midair, so we'll need to support those. So I'm going to position it in the center. Uh, I'm going to hit settings. And for our purposes, we'll use the quick settings. Actually, you can get some really good print quality by playing around with some of the custom settings. And I'll do another video of that at some other point. For quick settings, we're just going to hit either standard or low quality is good enough for our purposes for now. We want raft, because that's essential with the build tack surface. And support, uh, in this case, is a good idea, but that will vary from component to component. Once we're happy, just double check. You don't want to go above. 110, certainly not above 125, otherwise we'll damage the build tack surface. And the filaments um, that we've been using, the ABS, is pretty good at 230, 220. Okay, then we can hit print. Once we've prepared all the print files, all we need to do is hit print. It will send it to the printer, and the first thing it will do is calibrate the axes. Once calibrated, it's then just going to get the, uh, the plastic flowing by extruding a line across the front. And it'll then get started on making the raft, assuming the raft, of course, has been set. Now that raft's extremely important as it's going to allow the part to be removed from the build tack surface. Unlike any other print surface that I've ever used, it's actually too hard to get the prints off the surface. So the raft is one of the only ways we can actually get the um, the print off the off the bed. Once the 3D print is completed, you should just be able to open up, and we can see that the part has um, been printed on a raft. So once the build plate is cool, you need to lift a corner and use a spatula to help it off the build plate. And if you've got your raft settings uh, set correctly, then that shouldn't be a problem. Following that. We'll now need to just quickly remove this uh, the raft from the part, which is not a problem. The part should just simply peel off from the raft, and the raft is absolutely essential when we are printing with the um, the build tech print print surface that we looked at. This one's a little harder, and occasionally, especially if the print settings are wrong, you might need to get a, a small knife or chisel underneath, but if it's right, the parts will come right off the raft. Thanks for watching. If you like the idea of the Open Racer 112 scale radio controlled car, head on over to www.futurefab.org.uk. There should be a link up here somewhere, and you'll be able to download all the part files to get started printing your own uh, 3D printed radio controlled car. Like, subscribe, and comment, and especially if you want to keep on top of the build your own printer from scratch. And next week, we will be covering the laser cutting and the mechanical build, so stay tuned for that. We'll see you next time.